All right, we have something new or a new way to think about your cholesterol. We have Dr. Mike Heffernan, cardiologist here joining us. Thank you very much. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. Welcome to Talking With Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Wings. Today we're talking about LP little a. You've seen it around. You don't know what it is. You don't know why it matters and you don't even know if it matters to you specifically. Maybe so we're gonna... you, like me, thought LP little a was a rapper. I didn't know. <laughs> Apparently not. These jokes are getting worse. They are. They are worse. <laughs> not a joke. Um, so you want me to talk about LP little a? Hundred percent. All right. Um, so LP little a is LDL's evil cousin. Okay. Best description for this. Right. Um, okay. So we have we need cholesterol in our body. Right. Right. So we need cholesterol for the cell membranes that we've got throughout our body for the hormone steroid synthesis, but we don't need everything that we have, okay. and we have remnants of these the cholesterol production that is toxic. Right. Um, most of them contain a protein called ApoB. Right. ApoB is not great, right. um, but ApoB sticks on these cholesterol um, kind of globules, if they will, and allow it to attach to the arterial walls in our body right. and kind of migrate in and start to form plaque. Which makes them atherogenic. Which makes them atherogenic. Got it. And if you think about like the drywall in your house, if you had something that went inside the drywall and just started to expand and grow and grow and grow until the drywall cracks and bursts, yeah. that's the kind of thing that can happen in your arterial wall. Okay. So one of these bad molecules, one that most people are kind of familiar with is LDL. Yes. So LDL is small, yep. it has this ApoB protein on it, and, and it's not good. And so all our treatments and our recommendations for patients is to try and keep the LDL low because that will reduce your future risk of events. Right. Fine. Um, but LDL has this evil cousin called LP little a. Right. And so LP little a looks exactly like LDL. It has this ApoB protein on it, right. but it has another protein, mm -hmm. another protein called lipoprotein A. Right. And so the issue about lipoprotein A is that it has some bad features. Right. Um, it is atherogenic, so right. it will get into the arterial wall. It is also inflammatory. So right. this molecule has these little nasty spark plugs on it called oxidized phospholipids that are inflammatory for the arterial wall, which is not nice. And then the final part is this lipoprotein A protein is kind of like a clotting factor. Right, and like plasminogen, yeah, right? Yeah, it's like plasminogen. And so it promotes clotting. So this thing does three not so good things. Okay. Uh, promotes inflammation, promotes clotting, and is atherogenic. Right. Um, so that's LP little a. Would you also say that LP little a is responsible for this calcification of the valve? Is that a totally independent risk? You know, when they talk about oh. aortic stenosis, where right. they increase some type of bone or calcium depositing factors that preferentially goes at your aortic valve. So, so that's a fantastic question. And so we'll do another talk at some okay. other time about aortic stenosis. But the, the thing that LP little a has been most associated with is myocardial infarction. If you have high levels, you're more likely to have a myocardial infarction or heart attack. And when we say higher, like how much higher? Are we talking about like 4%? Or um, like orders of magnitude, like two and three times magnitudes, higher? They're magnitudes, like okay. two or three times higher above baseline, for okay. instance. Um, and the other signal was aortic stenosis, to everyone's right. surprise. Higher levels associated with aortic stenosis, which is a narrowing of the last valve in our heart before the blood leaves the heart, called the aortic valve. Okay. There is a signal, definitely, for stroke uh, and for heart failure, but the strongest signals are for heart attack and aortic stenosis. Okay, okay so now we've got this thing, lipoprotein little a, which you'd think might have been named in Canada. It's not because of the A. <laughs> It's actually an international thing, lipoprotein little a, and something we can measure in your bloodstream. Can measure. And has association with these cardiovascular events. Right. Now, is it is it causative or is it an association? Do we know that if we alter the lipoprotein A, we can alter those events, those cardiovascular events, or is it just, oh, because you have the genes that make lipoprotein A, you also have the genes that cause heart attack, aortic stenosis, and stroke? So I think we are, we're at the point now where we consider it causative. Okay. Um, in order to kind of get causative, we like the idea is our population studies. So we've got population studies, and this is a good one just to know right off. 80% of us have a normal value. Right. So, so four out of five of your listeners are not going to have a high LP little a, right. but one out of five will. Right. Um, there's some regional variations as well. So in Canada, the United States, Australia, Europe, about 20% of the population will have a higher value. Okay. Okay. Highest values on the African continent and Southeast Asia, maybe right. on the order of 30%. 
lowest values South America and Asia proper. Right. And so there's some global variations, um, but you alluded to it because it's genetic. Right. Um, you can't change your value right. um, by diet and exercise. And currently, we don't have any medications on the market that are available to lower it, although these are being actively studied. So there are clinical trials ongoing okay. um, that will lower your LP little a on the order of 50 or 60 percent. And we're trying to figure out, okay, so you have a high LP little a, <laughs> you've had a heart attack in the past, um, lower it and show me that you're going to have reduction in events. So that's right. what we're going to try and prove. Okay. And, and this is interesting. If, if you're one of those viewers who really hates big pharma, you're, you're watching the process now. There's been something identified in biology that is harmful for your health. There are people now actively trying to find a way to alter that, and that takes money, and that's a business, right? And that's sort of the overlap between healthcare and industry, because these pharmacologic companies are going to be like, yeah, we're going to try and find a way to lower that so that people have less heart attacks, strokes, and aortic stenosis, but that's going to translate into a, a drug or a product that's going to cost money. So right. that's the process. You're watching it in its earlier stages unfolding now. Yeah, that's fair. There, um, women and men have similar values. Right. Um, women, postmenopausal women, tend to have a value that's a little bit higher. Okay. So there aren't a lot of lifestyle things that change LP a little a, but but that's one of them. Right. Yeah. So so now we know about this molecule. Is the average family doctor or the average cardiologist, are they ordering, a, is there an LP little a blood test that we can do so you get that one value? Obviously, if you can't change it, you just need to know it once then for those people. Hey, yep. you're good or you're not good. There is. Okay. Um, and so in Canada, it's covered in every province now. Okay. Um, it's free. It's an insured service. Okay. Uh, we pay for it with our we taxes, to be sure. Yes, but it's um, nice to know. It's nice to know. So, yeah. And, and so, but a lot of people forget to do it. So it's right. not become, all you, our, our guidelines say, somebody should have it measured at least once in their lifetime. Starting at what age? Like, I mean, obviously, because if it's genetic, like maybe maybe earlier would be better. Well, generally what we say is, look, order it when you're ordering the other cholesterol parameters. Okay. So in Canada, in generally, it's kind of age 30 or so, okay. where you were measuring cholesterol numbers. Right. In the United States, it might be a little bit younger. But okay. if you're ordering the cholesterol, just add on an LP little a. Got it. Um, so, the Canadian, so the Canadian guidelines and the European guidelines both recommend this needs to be done at least once in somebody's lifetime. Right. Eventually, I think the American guidelines are going to uh, catch up and, and include it in theirs as well. Right. Um, it just makes sense. And okay. So easily measured. Okay. Here is the sixty thousand dollar question. Is it? Is it? Here's the million dollar. How much is that question at right now? I don't know. It's gone Maybe up. It I'm sure. Here's the billion dollar question. I have an elevated LP little a. What can I do about it? Right. So that's fair. That's a fair question. Or, or Doc, why are you even measuring right, this? You can't do because it. you're telling me you haven't got any way of treating it. Now anyway. I'm just nervous. Yeah. Now I'm just now, nervous. Basically, I'm going to get my affairs in order if I have an <laughs> elevated LP little a. That's right. all I'm getting so far. So, the answer to that, and what we tell the family doctors because they ask us the same thing, is look, you've flagged somebody in your chart or right. in your practice that is at higher risk. Right. So it gives you a chance to then explore the lifestyle things that we actually just talked about in the blood pressure video, okay. like healthy weight, yep. if they're smoking, don't smoke, um, if they're not exercising regularly, exercise regularly. Do all the things that you can do to just lower your risk anyway, yep. um, and, 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 and you'll be in better shape. Okay, so that's the start. The second one, intuitively, if this is related to LDL and it's kind of like LDL and we have a class of drugs that are good at lowering LDL regardless of what people feel about them, what, what are the role of statins in, in, in LP little a? Zero. Zero. Yep. And, and this is surprising that we can say this because a lot of people are like, oh yeah, he's going to say give a statin. So even though it's like a cousin to LDL, lowering your LDL does not affect your LP That's little not. a measurements. That's not. Okay, but yeah. now um, the, the fact that you have a high LP little a Will it may indirectly affect your statin intake? Because will it make you say, okay, well, then you better aggressively lower your LDL in that risk factor, or is that sort of not a thing? So, so that can be a thing, and that's where you know it comes into the art of medicine rather than just purely guideline based. And right. so, if you had somebody that had an LDL value when you did the calculation that was okay but mm. not great, you know that might be where you have a really thoughtful conversation with the patient, saying, look, this value is on the on the edge, but your LP little a value flags you as somebody that's pretty high risk. Right. Why don't we try and lower your so risk? Your high normal rate? really is high. We're going to get you down yeah. to normal. Yeah. So I think we were talking just before we came on air that 
there is one class of medications that is uh, on the market yes. that does lower LDL called, the whole class is called the PCSK9 inhibitors. And they're injectable medications that we use to lower LDL in people you know, with really high values of LDL that's hard to get down. Right. Interestingly, it actually lowers LP little a about 30 or 40%. Oh wait, right. so there is something. Yeah, there. nobody nobody really knows why, but I also can't tell you if lowering LP little a, a is actually going to make, it'll lower their LDL, but I don't know if it's gonna reduce their, their LP little a risk. That's why you have to do clinical studies to figure it out. And these are, I'm assuming, being there, done right there, now. There's actually two that are ongoing right now. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll stay tuned because we will, as soon as those clinical studies show some results, we'll let you know about those results because now I'm a little nervous about LP little a and I'm going to go get mine checked, I think, if my family doctor yeah. is into that. And so the, the take home message today then is obviously continue to do all the lifestyle things that we just talked about for your blood pressure, for your cholesterol normally. So eat healthy, exercise, get rid of your bad habits. But if you do have an elevated LP little a, that just encourages you to do these more than average because you are at slightly high risk of yeah. a bunch of different things. All right. I should have called it LP Big A because it's kind of like a, <laughs> it's a big problem. Yeah. With an exclamation yeah. mark, maybe. A little A sort of undermines it a little bit. Now. Leave your comments. If you've had this blood test done, if you know anything about it or want to talk about it more, leave it in the comments. And if you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to our channel. Thanks, little B. And remember, <laughs> you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time. Thanks.